right now. For the last six consecutive days, the hospitalization rate in Bear County has slowly decreased. Yeah, this is the county also saw a lower number of new cases today, which was 374. That brings the total confirmed cases to 41,177. Three people have died. That brings the death toll now to 352. 874 people are in the hospital right now. That's down 52 since yesterday. 352 of those are in the ICU and 244 people are on ventilators. Still just 13% of staffed hospital beds are available. More than 26,000 people have recovered so far. Three free COVID-19 test sites are up and running right now. Two locations at the Cuellar Community Center on San Fernando Street and the Ramirez Community Center off Gillette Boulevard. They do not require an appointment and are open daily from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And the Freeman Coliseum will also remain open. This testing site does require an appointment and runs from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. She was the love of my life. And... I don't know how to go forward from here. A heartbroken widow is mourning the loss of her late husband who was killed in a plane crash on the south side last weekend. That man identified by the Bear County Medical Examiner's Office as Simon David Willett. The night team's Jaffney Gray tells us how the love of his life is now remembering him. In my heart, I already, I already knew it, even if I didn't want to admit it to myself, I, I knew. It was a devastating call Emily Willett got last Saturday saying her husband, 55-year-old Simon Willett, was in a plane crash. They said that the engine was having issues keeping altitude, and the second was possibly could have been an overweight issue. Simon was an Air Force veteran who worked for the VA and who shared his love for people, sci-fi, and Star Wars. They even called him Vader. It was so funny, he would actually walk down the hospitals with a black cape on ever so often with his suit on just to make somebody smile. She says he also loved and knew everything to do with flying. Had the spirit of a child because him and his best friend were into flight sim. If there was nothing about airplanes that they did not love. Sadly, the morning of his death, Emily says Simon and his best friend boarded a discovery flight to see if he wanted that flight instructor to earn his pilot license. I can't be mad because it was his passion. And that's the one thing he always encouraged in me was to do whatever I love to do, whatever I wanted to do. And that's the one thing I would never stop him doing. The pilot and his best friend who was recovering from severe burns in the hospital survived the crash. Anything my husband would gladly give his life over and over again and make sure he walks out of that hospital and gets to spend the rest of his life with his family. Emily says she cherishes the five years of marriage they had together. He was my sanctuary. Like this place was his sanctuary, he was my sanctuary. Everywhere I look, he's in all the little details and he always will be. Daphne Gray, KSAT 12 News. Another life lost two weeks after a crash near Kerrville. Police say a man accused of being drunk crashed into several motorcycles head on back on July 18th. Yesterday, a thin blue line law enforcement motorcycle club member, Joseph Lazo, died from his injuries. His leg was crushed at the time of the crash. Lazo was a police sergeant in Illinois. Three other people were also killed in that wreck. Immigration and Customs Enforcement has said the man accused of causing the crash is a Mexican national. A San Antonio family left heartbroken following the deadly crash off Babcock this week. 19-year-old Savannah Ramos was killed after a driver crashed head on to the car she was riding in. San Antonio police say that driver was attempting to kill himself. Her father tells the night team, Stephen Cavazos, his daughter's big dreams have been cut short. We're planning, we're looking forward to a good time. Next thing you know, he's gone. Antonio Ramos describes July 30th as a day that will be etched in his mind forever. His daughter Savannah had just finished her classes with Health Careers High School in San Antonio, and the family was planning to meet for dinner. But Savannah would never make it. Ramos received a call from his daughter Susie that changed his life forever. There's been an accident and the car is on fire and Savannah's trapped. San Antonio police say a witness was able to pull them out before first responders arrived. Savannah's sister and a third passenger were taken to area hospitals with injuries, but Savannah died at the scene. Police arrested 26-year-old Colby Burke 
after he allegedly swerved his car into the other vehicle so he could kill himself. Savannah's dad had this to say to Burke. We forgive you. There is hope. At 19 years old, Savannah had dreams of making a difference in the world. Ramos says she wanted to pursue a career in the medical field. And that was her calling. That was her gift. And I could sense something special about her. Ramos describes her as full of life. A young woman who was able to touch so many in such a short time. We know that she was a special person. Uh, in her time that she was here with us. And Ramos is holding on to the final words that special person said to him. Dad, I love you. <laughs> I love you and, and uh, we'll see you later. Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Tonight we are getting our first look at the New Braunfels facility suspected of administering questionable COVID-19 tests in the last several weeks. The FBI today saying those tests at the Living Health Holistic Healthcare in New Braunfels should not have been used. If you were tested at this facility recently, call the FBI, their number 210-225-6741. You are also being encouraged to contact your primary care physician or local health department for retesting. Millions of Americans will no longer receive an extra $600 a week in unemployment benefits as of yesterday. This measure was one of three programs in the $2 trillion CARES Act. The extra money provided help to about two thirds of unemployed. Earlier this week, the Senate Republicans proposed a $1 trillion relief package, which would only add an extra $200 to unemployment benefits. However, House Democrats want the $600 to last until early next year. The unemployment benefits is the second CARES Act program to expire. The first was the eviction protection program that ended last Friday. If a new relief bill isn't passed, the next program to expire will be the Paycheck Protection Program, which expires on August 8th. The coronavirus is predicted to kill nearly 30,000 more Americans in the next three weeks. That's according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. 35 states and Puerto Rico now seeing an increase in the number of COVID cases. California has become the first state with half a million confirmed cases. The same day recorded its highest, de highest death toll at 219. And contact tracers in Illinois linking multiple cases to a private high school prom that nearly 300 people attended. The pandemic, the U.S. Census 2020 campaign, along with city and county partners and LULAC, leading a caravan of cars through the city's west side today, where participation remains low. The headcount plays an important part in gathering funds for schools, roads, and emergency management. What we know from our current data is that uh, households in this area have not responded to the census, and we know that less than 50% of the population here has responded. Mail an average of uh, on average, the questionnaire takes about 10 minutes to complete and it gives San Antonio and Bear County their share of billions of dollars in annual federal funding for the next 10 years. So be sure to complete the survey. Another caravan will be held next weekend. This one over on the city's east side. Well, protesters kept the pandemic in mind while highlighting the Black Lives Matter movement. A caravan of cars kept protesters safe while spreading the message of solidarity from solidarity from the east to the west side of town. Because silence is violence. <laughs> uh, when you don't speak up, when you see something's wrong, it's not fair. This is America. That's not how we operate. And uh, this is just one more step further as far as uh, civil rights. We're not done yet. Protesters also demanded justice for Fort Hood soldier Vanessa Guillen and collected canned foods for the San Antonio Food Bank. All right, outside with live cam, 85 degrees, a hot day. A few lucky folks really west of 35 got some good rain this afternoon, some pop up showers and storms uh, rolling along in our westernmost communities. We'll pick up another chance of rain tomorrow after that. We're really going to cut off the rain chances, unfortunately. It'll be a pretty quiet night tonight. Skies are mostly clear. That's how they'll stay through tomorrow morning. And check it out. First thing tomorrow morning, we'll be in the low 70s. Not too shabby, but it'll heat up pretty quickly as we get into tomorrow afternoon. Uh, I really want to, I'm excited to walk you through the wind forecast for what is tropical storm Isaias, how it's going to affect Florida over the next 24 hours or so. We'll take a look at that and I'll get you uh, your latest tropic stats coming up in the full forecast. Courtney. Thank you, Katie. Well, looking ahead to tomorrow's leading essay segment, we'll be speaking with NEISD Superintendent Dr. Sean Micah. We'll discuss the recent school reopening guidance from both local and state leaders, along with what the NEISD 
any ISD fall semester will look like. You can still submit your questions. Just head to our website, ksat.com, and click the Leading Essay tab. Still ahead on the night beat, more than a decade's worth of criminal evidence discovered in a deputy's garage. What this means for those unsolved cases. Plus, preparations underway tonight in Florida as Isai Ies moves closer to the coast after hitting the Bahamas. We'll have the latest on when it's expected to make landfall in the U.S. And next, we take a look at the state's hemp program, including a ban on certain hemp products and the impact that could leave on the cannabis industry. That's next on the night beat. The Texas Department of State Health Services has released its final rules that will govern the state's hemp program. With those rules, a ban on smokable hemp will be in effect beginning tomorrow. Digital journalist Ivan Herrera spoke with experts in the cannabis industry who say the ban won't just have an effect on retailers, but also on consumers who depend on hemp products for relief. Governor Greg Abbott signed House Bill 1325 into law last June to allow for the production, manufacturing, retail sale, and inspection of hemp products in Texas. Jax Finkel, the executive director for Texas Normal, a nonprofit that focuses on cannabis reform, says lawmakers created a hemp program in the last legislative session under the Department of State Health Services. The goal of the program is to come up with rules and regulations for the hemp industry. So they lay out the guidelines for what's allowable in your product, what are the required testing protocols, a lot of things that are just kind of like truth and labeling, good consumer protections. Finkel says the program had already banned the manufacturing of hemp for smokable purposes in the last session. However, it hadn't expressly prohibited these types of products at the retail level. So the state asked the public for comment on why it should keep these smokable hemp products on shelves. Uh, there were just under 1,700 commenters, however, who strongly disagreed with that being included in the rules. Finkel says because of the smokable hemp ban that's taking effect on August 2nd, many shops across Texas will be affected. So what does the ban mean for you, the consumer, when it comes to purchasing from a local shop? You know, anything that's not marketed for smoking or vaporization will still be able to be available to everyone. Grace Delgado, who is the founder of the Texas CBD blog, has been advocating on her website for change. Delgado says the new rules are a cause for concern for consumers who rely on these types of products for relief. It confuses the ability for consumers to uh, know what to do with their product and be properly educated. And that, to me, that's a little misleading and it's not a gray area. Delgado says for those consumers who may be confused, it's important to be informed and stay up to date on the latest cannabis news and politics. Ivan Herrera, KSAT 12 News. Well, I hope you guys got a look at that light show that we were talking about that we did because yeah. it's not going to be happening a lot more. <laughs> it was a nice little diversion until yeah. we hit the triple digits again. I know, yeah. It was nice. This pattern we had been in the past few days was slightly unsettled. We had the heat high off to the west. A little bit of upper level lift moving in, but that is all going to be changing as we get into next week. A look at radar tonight. You can kind of see there toward the beginning of the loop off to the west. A few little showers and storms that uh, were trying their darndest to keep going this evening. But once we lost the heat of the day, they really did fizzle out. Uh, there was a good bit more thunderstorm activity down in deep south Texas today. Of course, this is a part of the state that really doesn't need it after Hurricane Hannah last weekend. But luckily, uh, this rain will move along a lot quicker than the rains from Hannah did uh, about this time last week. 99 our high temperature in San Antonio today. No rain at the airport, unfortunately. And from yesterday's rain, we only got seven one hundredths of an inch of rain. So not really generous across a lot of Bear County, but other portions of the viewing area did pick up more than two inches of rain from that rain yes, uh, yesterday. So not all bad news, and I think the aquifer uh, will get a nice boost from yesterday's rain as well. Temperature wise, we're in the 80s, low 80s in the hill country, uh, a couple of degrees shy of 90 degrees in Del Rio, 81 in Pleasanton and 80 in Gonzales. Our dew points fell off pretty nicely this afternoon, especially west of 35 and up in the hill country. These numbers are starting to rebound a bit this evening, though. We've got a dew point in the low 70s here in San Antonio. So tomorrow morning it will be a little on the humid side, but we should get our air temperatures down into the low to mid 70s for a lot of us, maybe even a few folks in the upper 60s in the hill country. So overall, not too bad for early August. If you can get out early enough in the day, 
I don't think it'll be terribly uncomfortable to go for a walk or jog or to take the dog for a walk in the morning, but by the afternoon, just hot. We'll see a lot of spots near 100 degrees tomorrow afternoon and just a 20% chance of an isolated shower or storm. So I've jumped the future cast ahead here uh, to when we should start to see our high temperatures tomorrow afternoon and just isolated showers and non severe storms possible again across the area tomorrow afternoon like the rain today and yesterday. It will be very hit or miss, so do not hold your breath because as I like to say when it comes to these hit or miss showers, if you hold your breath, you may end up passing out and that's not what we want you to do. Heading into tomorrow night, just like today, we lose the heat of the day and any thunder showers that develop tomorrow afternoon will fizzle out. Monday, just a stray shower or storm possible. And after that, we cut off rain chances for about the next week or so because our weather pattern will be starting to change here. So I mentioned over the past couple of days, we've had this energy off to our northeast and that has sent some weak disturbances down uh, from North Texas and that has sparked our showers and storms uh, that have been fairly low in coverage the past couple of days, but what changes here as we get into next week? Oh, the heat high moves back in closer to us here in Texas, and that'll send our temperatures above average heading into the next week or so. Talking about the tropics, we've got Tropical Storm Isaias. If you've been paying close attention to this system, it was a hurricane weakened over the Bahamas today, but now it's really starting to flare up here on satellite. All that red color uh, indicating some deep convection, some deep moisture. It is starting to get over uh, some more open water tonight. Maximum sustained wind 70 miles per hour, and you'll notice here Hurricane Center thinks it will go back up to Category 1 hurricane status late tonight and early tomorrow. Forecast cone does have it hug the coast of Florida. Very very tightly eventually affecting the Carolinas in the northeast Monday into Tuesday. But I do want to show you quickly. This is pretty cool. Just how close these tropical storm force winds are going to get to parts of the east eastern coast of Florida as we get into the day tomorrow. This is a close call and I do think the communities directly along the beach there in the coastline uh, will see some tropical storm force winds. Uh, as we get into the day tomorrow. So it's going to be a close call for them. Close call for the Georgia coast and the coast of the Carolinas as well. So just because that system maybe doesn't make landfall on Florida doesn't mean they won't see some big effects over the next day or so back here at home. Fairly quiet, pretty comfortable in the afternoon uh, in the morning, hot in the afternoon with a 20% chance of an isolated thunder shower. Dang, those graphics were really kind of glitchy there. I'll have to check on the computer. We'll talk uh, more about the extended forecast coming up next half hour. Guys, the graphics don't want to see hundreds no. either. I think yep. that's why we're all you in You broke defiance. it, putting all those numbers in there, Katie. <laughs> it's your fault. <laughs> all right, the NBA is back, and many NBA players kneeled for the national yes. anthem. Some stood, including our very own Pop. Yes, that's right, guys. Pop and Becky both stood up during the national anthem. Now, Pop addressed it during peak pregame. Becky, well, she hasn't talked about it publicly to my knowledge, but this we do know, DeMar DeRozan stood up for the both of them. Plus, staying with the Spurs, Derek White had a fantastic game last night, dominating the Kings. Coming up. Pop and Becky standing. Um, I have no thoughts and belief in them that it's all out of genuine, out of, out of a positive side of their heart. DeMar DeRozan doesn't have any issues with Pop and Becky standing during the national anthem in Big Board Sports. The Spurs reboot is off to a great start, but not without some controversy. Last night during the national anthem while wearing Black Lives Matter shirts, the Spurs and Kings all took a knee except for Spurs head coach Greg Popovich and his assistant coach Becky Hammond. They were the only two standing. Pop, who has often spoken out against racism, said he preferred to keep his reason to stand to himself and that everybody has to make a personal decision. He also said he didn't tell the team what to do and that everybody has the freedom to react any way they want. Spurs leading the score last night. DeMar DeRozan doesn't have a problem with Pop or Becky not taking a knee. Same way we knew, you know, um, don't take away nothing from those, those guys. You know, Pop speaks out when it comes to Becky. She's been front line um, fighting for equality since I've been a fan of hers playing WNBA. So everybody have their own right of, of making a statement and you can't, can't vilify nobody for not doing what the other group was doing. So, you know, I'm all for it. Two minutes 
As for the game itself, the Spurs played small ball with DeMar as the starting power forward, and he responded with 27 points on 10 of 13 shooting. Guard Derek White was next, tying his regular season best of 26 points. He added eight rebounds, five assists, one steal, one block shot, and he took five charges. He was all over the court and even suffered a chipped right front tooth. White's game is just getting better and better. I'm just playing my game, be aggressive. Um, that's pretty much what my mindset was going into into this game. Um, I'm blessed to be able to play a game of basketball, and I just wanted to go out there. And I mean, I had Elijah McLean on my shoes, so I wanted to show out well for him and his family because uh, he obviously unjustly died. So um, just go out there, compete, have fun, play the game I love, and um, give him all. One of our top defenders, maybe the top defender. Uh, he contests threes. He takes charges. Uh, he's really developed into a fine player. Really pleased for him. And that's how the Spurs have started. That's how Marco Bellinelli, who scored nine points last night, is doubtful Sunday with a left foot sprain. And Bryn Forbes remains out with right quad tightness. So the Spurs will face the Memphis Grizzlies tomorrow at 3 p.m. No word yet if Patty Mills will play. Memphis is eighth in the West, three games ahead of the Silver and Black. New Orleans started the day a half game behind the Spurs in the Western Conference and faced the Clippers, who were lights out from downtown. Paul George nails a three, and it's 12 to 2 Clippers. Kawhi spins and goes triple to make it 40 to 25 LA. Reggie Jackson now makes a corner three, and it's 50 to 34 Los Angeles. Kawhi now feeds George for another tray, and the Clips go up by 22. George scored 28, Leonard 24. The Clippers made 25 threes and led from start to finish and by as many as 42 points. Clippers win 126 to 103. The Pels are now 0-2 in Orlando. In the Texas Collegiate League, the Round Rock Harry Men canceled their final two games of the regular season. After it says team members tested positive for COVID-19, they were scheduled to face the Chonklas tonight and tomorrow. The team posted an announcement on Facebook and Twitter this afternoon reading in part quote which is two games remaining in the season out of an abundance of caution we felt it was in the best interest of our players and staff to end the season now end quote so instead the flying chanclas played the Texas USA baseball team from the Syntex League at the Wolf this evening and they won Seattle Seahawks safety and former Jet Jamal Adams is dedicating this season the Jets and Rocket Bryce Wisdom guys we have that for you later in sports. You'll have to stick around to see it. Thanks, Larry. The hairy man. Yeah, that always a, gets that's me. a great name, by the way. <laughs> Flying Tonkles is his best. <laughs> we'll be right back. A disturbing mountain of evidence discovered in a garage in Las Cruces, New Mexico. County investigators there linking that evidence to a veteran deputy who's been with the department for over a decade. We found 72 pieces of evidence linked to nine cases. He never brought it to the station. We don't know how many hands touched this. Vincent Lopez worked from 2003 to 2014 at the Donna Anna Sheriff's Office in New Mexico. He investigated child and adult sex crimes. This was a, a betrayal of trust, a public trust. To walk into a room full of this was uh, astonishing uh, to all of us. Inside the pile of evidence. Knives, there was clothes, there was DNA swabs. It is the first time uh, in, in my experience as a prosecutor that I have ever uh, seen anything like this. In all of these collective years, we have never seen anything like this. But according to the district attorney's office, these cases are ineligible for prosecution because too much time has passed. We are just as outraged as the sheriff's department is. There was someone who had been entrusted and they failed so horribly. The Donna Anna County Sheriff says her office and the DA's office have attempted to contact all alleged victims who might never see their day in court. Speaking personally, I'm very, very sorry. The deputy is charged with 18 combined counts of evidence tampering and tampering with public records. Isaias moved through the Caribbean with uh, hurricane force winds, killing at least three people, including a five-year-old boy in the Dominican Republic. It has now been downgraded to a tropical storm as it heads towards Florida tonight. Florida's governor declaring a state of emergency for 16 counties. And this morning, President Trump 
approving federal disaster relief. Florida is currently the U.S. epicenter of the pandemic, shutting down public testing sites ahead of the storm's arrival. Shelter kits are prepared for 10,000 residents, along with extra personnel for possible power outages. Take a look in your fridge. Red onions are being recalled after being linked to a salmonella outbreak. The FDA reports nearly 400 people have been sickened nationwide, including here in Texas. The red onions are from Thompson International Incorporated in Bakersfield, California. The FDA also believes the white, yellow and sweet onions are contaminated after possibly coming in close contact with the red onions. If you have onions from Thompson International Incorporated, you are urged to throw them away. A Minnesota police officer is okay after getting sideswiped during a traffic stop. Take a look. A video shows the officer walking up to a pulled over vehicle when the car drives right by him and clips him on his arm. Another responding squad car quickly races past that uh, to catch up to the vehicle. The department says the driver now facing several charges, including criminal vehicular operation and driving while intoxicated. President Donald Trump is once again setting his eyes on the social media app TikTok. Here's what the president had to say about the app yesterday. We're looking at TikTok. We may be banning TikTok. We may be doing some other things or a couple of options, but a lot of things are happening. The president has spoken against TikTok in the past, citing security concerns because it is owned by a Chinese company. The Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States has already ordered TikTok's parent company to sell the app. And now the company's general manager is responding to the possible ban. He wrote in a tweet, quote, we're not planning on going anywhere. TikTok is a home for creators and artists to express themselves, their ideas and connect with people across different backgrounds, end quote. President Trump says he could use emergency economic powers or an executive order to enforce the ban of the app. Coming up next, we have a warning to tell you about for those with food allergies, why you might want to pay extra close attention to labels. If you or someone in your family has a food intolerance or allergy, listen up. The FDA is temporarily allowing packaged food manufacturers to substitute ingredients without changing the labels. That means you might not know exactly what's in the product. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz looks at why and how you can make safer choices. As a baby, Christina Nolan's son Michael was diagnosed with a milk soy protein intolerance. He would be vomiting or there would be diarrhea. He would have a rash, like a horrible rash on his face. Michael is now six and his mom continues to pay close attention to food labels. But what if they aren't accurate? That is huge. Um, that could cause so many problems. That could become reality. To avoid food supply disruptions due to the pandemic, the FDA temporarily relaxed labeling guidelines. This will allow certain ingredients to be substituted, but the label stays the same. Well, there's real confusion about this temporary policy. Parents and consumer groups have demanded more transparency. The FDA says none of the substitutions can be one of the top eight allergens without disclosing it to consumers. For other foods that are known to cause allergies, the FDA says that manufacturers should avoid using them as substitutes, but saying should leaves it up to the manufacturer to decide what's safe to substitute. And there are many people with allergies or sensitivities to rare ingredients that the manufacturers might not know to consider. No companies have utilized this temporary policy, but there is no end date for this policy. So if you become worried about eating something, call the manufacturer to confirm the label is accurate. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Outside with live camp, still sitting in the mid 80s. Just a few clouds. I mean, overall, it's really not too bad out there this evening. And this will lead us into a pleasant start for your Sunday morning. So if your car maybe got a little bit dirty, if you were one of the lucky ones that got some healthy rainfall last night, maybe even one of those isolated thunderstorms this afternoon, here's your car wash forecast. Really looking good Monday and beyond because unfortunately rain chances fall out of the forecast. We will have some isolated thunder showers around tomorrow afternoon. But if you're feeling bold, Go for it tomorrow and that wash should last you a good while. We'll take another look at your extended forecast coming up. 
little rain, thunder and lightning last night, and now we head into a long stretch of warm long, weather. Long, long, yeah. long. Yeah, Hope you got a little rain yesterday. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the summer sizzle is back. Uh, kicking off August, wrapping up July, we always like to take a look back. Justin Horn has written a fantastic article that's on KSAT.com. You can go check it out right now. It has some of this information in there, but some additional information as well. July, very hot. Average high temperature across the whole month, 99.7 degrees. We had 14 days with a high temperature at or above 100. And when you look at this, each day in July, our high temperature was above average, with the exception of last weekend, and that's when... Hurricane Hannah tossed us a little bit of cloud cover and a slight cool down. So uh, 2020 in the record books, when you take the average high temperature, it was the third hottest July on record. When you take the average temperature overall, so high temperatures and low temperatures, second hottest July on record. So this was no ordinary July, my friends, that we just wrapped up. It was record setting, not necessarily in a good way. And we're going to keep the heat going. 99 your forecast high tomorrow. And then we have another string of triple digits in your planning forecast, carrying us all the way into the start of next weekend. And I'll even give you a look beyond that to about the middle of August. This is from the Climate Prediction Center. This is another branch of NOAA. And looking ahead through the middle of the month. So we've got the triple digits through the next seven days or so roughly and looking even beyond that we've got a 40 to 50 percent chance of seeing above average temperatures here in san antonio and south texas that's what these colors mean uh, this particular shade of orange means 40 40 to 50 percent odds of us seeing our temperatures staying above average through the middle of the month so unfortunately no pumpkin spice weather on the horizon any anytime soon i'm ready i don't know about you but i'm ready uh a little bit of good news here. We're about to turn a corner or about to in two weeks. We'll start to turn the corner of our high temperatures for the year. Uh, really starting in the middle of July. We go on this uptick here. Our average high temperatures for the year max out at 97 the middle of this month and then we'll be on our way down. So we're on the roller coaster here. Up, up, up. We got a little more ways to go and then we'll be on the downhill trend. Nothing but cardigans after that. Just, yeah. just, just kidding. Uh, mid 80s tonight, mostly clear skies. Dew point is in the low 70s, so it feels like 90. I know I said it's not terribly uncomfortable. I guess it's not terribly uncomfortable, but it's not terribly comfortable either. Temperatures tonight will fall down to the low 70s. Our skies will stay mostly clear. Winds are light. That's what will help to get those temperatures down to the low 70s. Certainly will be a little humid to start the day tomorrow. But not, I mean, low 70s, that's pretty good for the morning. So if you want to get out for an early morning walk or jog, I don't think it'll be too bad out there. We will warm up pretty quickly tomorrow afternoon. 99, your forecast high temperature. And with a little bit of lift left in the atmosphere before that heat high just plops over us, uh, we will have a chance of an isolated shower or storm tomorrow afternoon, generally after lunchtime through about sunset. And then like the past couple of days, those showers, any that do develop will wrap up after sunset. Stray shower not out of the question Monday, but it is not looking too good. And then here comes the heat high. Rain chances drop out of the forecast and high temperatures will be in the triple digits. I know it's obnoxious to, you know, complain about high temperatures in the summer in South Texas, but I feel like it's 2020. We've been through enough and we're allowed to complain about it. Yeah, Mother Nature doesn't care what we've been through. <laughs> doesn't care. She's going to do what she's going to do. Pumpkin spice. Keep dreaming there, Katie. <laughs> She has Although the candles there, there, out There already. was Halloween stuff at some of the stores I was out at the other day. Can you so. just do it on ice? Yeah. Yeah, that'll work. Mm -hmm. Speaking of pumpkin spice, <laughs> we're heading towards the fall. Football still <laughs> on target to start. They're getting ready. Yes, they are. And J.J. Watt and the Texans are out in Houston getting ready for the season. And J.J. says he's in the best shape he's been in, say, since the last five, six seasons. And that spells doom for the rest of the league. Plus... NFL defensive back Jamal Adams says he's playing this season for Bryce Wisdom. It's a touching gesture for sure. Coming up.
veteran players such as Dak Prescott, Ezekiel Elliott, Amari Cooper, and Zach Martin have finally joined the Dallas Cowboys after successfully meeting NFL protocols of testing earlier in the week. This means for the first time this summer, most of the team is now at the star inside the Ford Center. While the building has a different look and feel due to COVID-19 safety protocols, it's the first chance for some of the rookies to meet the established guys. 2020 second round draft pick Trayvon Diggs was asked about trying to stay COVID free while he's there at the star. Just follow the protocols that they, you know, they tell us to do every day and just do everything that they're supposed to, you know, so, you know, just taking the COVID test every day and doing everything that they're supposed to and just follow, just follow the directions, follow the rules, follow what's going on in the building and, you know, you'll be just fine. And so much for the kicking competition. The Cowboys cut Kai Forbath, leaving veteran Greg Zerline as the only kicker in camp. Houston Texans players reported for their first day of conditioning for the 2020 NFL season at their training facility in H-Town. The Texans released a series of photos showing the guys working out inside the practice bubble. Heading into his 10th season, defensive end J.J. Watt is looking as ripped as ever, which is great for the Texans defense. In the past four seasons, he's missed 32 of Houston's 64 regular season games due to injury. So during the COVID-19 shutdown, Watt said he was able to focus more on transforming his body. It truly has been one of the best off seasons from a workout standpoint that I've ever had, and I'm very, very pleased about it. Um, I mean, my body feels as good as, as it's felt since probably 2014, 2015, somewhere around there. So I'm really looking forward to getting into camp uh, and just getting to work. Watt is a three-time NFL Defensive Player of the Year, winning the honor in 2012, 14, and 15. Watt and the guys are expected to put on pads for the first time in camp August 14th. Former Jet and current Seattle Seahawks safety Jamal Adams is dedicating this season to Bryce Wisdom, who recently passed away after his battle with cancer. Former UTSA head football coach Frank Wilson, who met Adams at LSU, reached out and asked him to call Bryce, who's a huge Seahawks fan. A tough phone call indeed, but one Adams is glad he made. The tough part about it, the call was knowing that, you know, it was his last day. And uh, that, that, that really touched me, man, because during his last day of, of, of suffering, going through that and fighting, he wanted to meet me. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, I, I didn't take that light, man. It, it hit home and I, 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 I have nothing but love and, and, and respect for his family uh, to reach out and, and you know, um, make, his, make his dream come true. Adams tweeted, may Bryce rest in peace, and he's playing the season for him. San Antonio FC on the road tonight facing Austin Bold FC. San Antonio already up 1-0, 27th minute, adding to the lead. Central Catholic's Jose Gallegos finds Blake Smith, and the Bernie native goes far post for the goal. San Antonio leads 2-1 at halftime. Austin ties it up early in the second half, but SAFC responds in the 74th minute. Christian Pirano blasts one from outside the box. A beautiful strike gives San Antonio the lead, and they win by a final of 4-2, so SAFC remains undefeated this season. Guys. Looking good. Yes, they are. I have to say, I got to go back to J.J. Watt. He, the only thing I can think of is Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> like, immediately, like, the job. <laughs> he looks exactly like Buzz Lightyear. Had to get it in there. Made that shirt look very small. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> right, we'll be back right after this. <laughs> It's time tonight to tell you something good. Favorite part of the night. A Burbank family has a creative way to entertain and educate their neighbors during this pandemic. They created an aquarium and zoo in their front yard. This is so cool. Take a look. There are now more than 700 decorated cardboard cutouts on display, some decorated by their community members. All the sea and zoo animals and their exhibits have names like Diamond the Lion and the Chameleon Canopy and the Toucan Brothers. The family hopes the aquarium and zoo creatures can spread some love during the pandemic. Having them come by and give us feedback that they love it, it makes it all worthwhile. So we have no end date. It's kind of just until we run out of Amazon boxes. <laughs> in addition, the family is also collecting art supplies for third grade students in South Central Los Angeles. Pretty cool. I love that. That is awesome. Uh, not too bad in the morning, 73, but up to near 100 in the afternoon. Tomorrow is kind of our last good day to get an afternoon thunder shower. After that, triple digits are back, guys.
There it comes. Well, that's all of our time for tonight. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to catch GMSA tomorrow morning starting at 6. Have a great night.